Good everyone, oh, okay. so today we have a review on the AD4 Sky Raider. Now I did a video on the AD2 Sky Raider quite a while back. I will, well, well I'll be leaving a link to that in the description below. And as you can probably tell, the AD4 is extremely similar. And you're pretty much hitting the nail on the head. They don't really change all that much. The AD4 gets two extra cannons and also gets access to different, well, I say different, it's more like one different, um, ordnance capability. And obviously, if you're wanting to go for Grand Pound, and the AD4 is going to be the king. However, to me, whilst this thing is manoeuvrable, the AD2 feels better in the turn. I don't know if that is 100% accurate, but that's my that's my personal guess. But we'll go over the American 84, then we'll go over the French 84, and we'll move on from there. Because obviously they're both the same aircraft pretty much. The, the French one has more ordnance options. But the American 84 is, to quite simply say, it's an amazing aircraft. It's one of the best ground attackers that I've flown in a long time. So here you can see I've got the maximum payload that you can strap to this aircraft. 12 H4 rockets, two 1,000 pound bombs, and a 2,000 pounder hanging there under the fuselage. The wing drop, well, the wing bombs drop as a pair. The 2,000 pounder obviously drops on its own because there's only one. The rockets, obviously, they fire as a pair as well. You've got 200 rounds per cannon, so you get a total of 800 rounds. These rip apart enemy fighters. I nearly got an ace in this thing at one point. I just kept ripping apart enemy bombers, specifically 288s, because they you're gonna see a lot of those because well everyone their mothers bought one it seems. But it's still fun to slaughter them because they don't expect the 84 to pack such firepower. Now, let's get into the payload options and well whilst the American one isn't as OTT, just wait till I show you the French one. So sorry about that. Um for some reason there was a for some reason Epic Games saw one up, um update then. Terribly sorry about that. Um anyway, back to it. Both aircraft start out with twelve H4 rockets. You can then obviously unlock a tiny Tim, you can obviously unlock two thousand pound bombs, five hundred pound bombs, and one thousand pound bombs. However, the Mighty Mouse rockets are what really make this aircraft a bit different. These are 290mm capable of penetrating warheads and they are highly effective, they are very easy to aim and with 700m a second these rockets are they're pretty easy to aim and they're pretty fun to use. Now obviously as you can tell there's a lot of external pylons which are not needed this makes the aircraft even more drag. Well, obviously, because of the launchers not being able to be detached, this will further increase your drag even after you get rid of the rockets. So if you are going to take this ordnance option, I would highly recommend making sure you've got at least some degree of fighter cover because this really does weigh down the aircraft quite significantly. Same with um, a maximum bomb load of 4,000 pounds. That is enough to take out a base. But um, please do be considerate of the fact that your aircraft will now be a brick. Because, well, as powerful as this engine is at 3,200 horsepower, yeah, it's still going to struggle. you got to remember it's 4,000 pounds of bombs plus rockets. And the French AD4 has it worse, in my personal opinion. But that pretty much covers it. Both aircraft have, same, or have the same armor profile, 9.5 millimeters of steel there. Nine and a half there, and th well, forty up here. The arm of the canopy isn't great because obviously it's a it's a teardrop canopy. There's a lot of open areas where the pilot can be pilot sniped. Most of my deaths came from the central fuel tank actually catching on fire and me running out of fuel. So there you go. Just watch the central fuel tank. Let's move on to the French one. Now, personally, I prefer to look at the French one. It looks more. It, it looks like my sort of bird. Like, I know that seems dumb, but I like the look of this one more. And I'd actually argue that the French 84 is better in terms of bombs, rockets combined. Whilst the American 84 can carry, obviously, the Mighty Mouse. This cannot, but 
this makes up for it in other areas. So obviously, in my personal opinion, this aircraft look, well, this version looks better. The French 84 has always looked better in my personal opinion. But obviously, they're the same engine, same fuel tank placement, same guns, same ammo load. It's when you get into the ordnance options. But obviously, here you can see the maximum capability. 24 heat rockets, two 1,000 pound bombs, and a 2,000 pounder. Pretty fearsome. But then you look at the ordnance options. Yeah, there's a lot here, isn't there? But obviously, you can start out with HVR rockets, as I said at the beginning. You get Tiny Tims and HE rockets, Tiny Tims and AP rockets, or oh, sorry, heat, heat, heat rockets is what I meant to say. I don't know why I thought AP there, because AP will not be pushing 450 millimeters. But you can see the ordnance is just insane. There's so much to choose from. Obviously, you can configure your aircraft how you like. This, this is obviously where you guys come in. Now, if you're going after ships, the best rocket load, even though it seems like you're getting more for your buck out of these, is actually with the H4 rocket and the torpedo. Same goes for the uh, American 84. Obviously, you could probably try the Mighty Mouse rockets, but I don't think those would work, personally. I've, I've tried them against a base, and they are pathetic, to put it simply. Um, I, I, I didn't have time to change out the rockets, so I just thought, okay, I'll just take a full load of rockets to see what we can do, and sure enough, we actually won the battle because of that. But, um, as you can tell, there's a lot of different choices to make. Like I said, my favourite payload has to be the 24 heat rockets, the two 1,000 pound bombs, and the 2,000 pounder. But again, this is personal preference. Obviously, there's a lot of different... Um, things to unlock so it may take some time to get to the maximum capability of this aircraft but I can promise you this it is well worth it this aircraft is highly capable and very versatile and as you can tell the American 84 as it lacks the French rockets is far different but yeah this aircraft is highly capable both aircraft I had a lot of fun in and well what can I say I mean 32 air kills, most of which were bots, so I'd probably take off about 20 of those. In fact, no, not even 20. I'd take off about 15 of them, but it's still capable. 200 grand targets, and then we go to the French one, which, this again, I flew this out mostly with Bertie. 9 air kills, 10 deaths, 237 grand units. If you're left alone, the chances are the 84 is just going to bleed your tickets, especially the American 84. And all I will say is if you're a tanker and you need some air support for your American 6-0 lineup or whatever, or 6-3, well, here's your bird. So there you go. That, that's all I really need to say. But anyway, let's jump into the battle. Now, this is a 25-minute battle, but do not worry. I will skip the crap because, trust me, it was a long-ass battle. A very, very long battle. I was with um, Bertie Burt in this one. And, well, Bertie Burt was, um, well, recently we flew out in the B-29, which, um, obviously, I'm going to be doing a different kind of spade review, how I typically would. But, um, let's just say Bertie Burt was not happy in one of the battles that happened in the B-29. And, funny enough, it was directed at an AD-4 pilot, which... If you want to, no doubt he'll clear this up in the comments below. And with, here's the replays having an issue. <laughs> they just love technical issues. There we go, that fixed it. But obviously, as you can tell, we're with the uh, we're with the French 84, and at this time, I believe I had the two 500 pounders and the 12 H fars. Which, not a bad payload to start off with. I mean, it's perfectly adequate, and well. Even with this whole lack, of, like, obviously I'm not fully loaded up, but this thing can still clean up ground targets on this map, even without full payload. If I had a full payload, chances are I could easily get most of these ground targets destroyed, if not all of them. And at this point, you may wonder, why am I shaking the rudder? I was getting a feel for the aircraft. Because I think this was my third game in the aircraft, so I wanted to get a feel for it. And it felt that rudder response is extremely good for a ground attacker. The rudder response itself is extremely good. 
And for a ground attacker, this thing is quite maneuverable, as mentioned, and that subsequently allows you to maneuver the aircraft nicely, and then you can obviously engage your ground targets. Even with a full payload on, that rudder is still effective. Obviously, I've fired a couple of rockets to get rid of those bloody AAA guns, because we all know what they're like. No one likes AAA. And, well, as far as I'm concerned, they could rot, those flipping AA pieces. But at this point, I'm just starting to clean up. I mean, that, that's what I meant. Well, that's what I'm here for. And, well, Birdie Bert's actually in his Whirlwind P9. He doesn't actually, well, at this time, he didn't actually have any vehicles that could join me at this BR. Now he does though, and he just flies a P-47 D-28, and he still kicks ass. And at this point, a Doe-335 A-1 has decided to come for me. And this is where the 335 pilot makes a critical mistake. He underestimates my aircraft, and he, un and he overestimates his own. As you can tell, even at lower speeds, this thing is actually quite maneuverable. Now, out turning a 335 is not much of an achievement, but I was easily able to cut inside of his turn there and just go back to farming. That's going to be my first and only air kill of this game, by the way. But I had to leave that in. That 335 pilot should not have engaged. But I have dumbass 335 pilots seem to think they can just take on anything in a turn fight noticed that a lot recently, a lot of um, 3.5 pilots tend to be quite... How, how can I put this? Overconfident is the word I would describe. But as you can tell, this, this enemy team was acting very strange. Normally I would have been dove on by at least two of them. But surprisingly we only had the one and it was a 3.5 who didn't know what he was doing so I was able to handle him. Now obviously as you can tell the guns are spraying quite a bit, that happens quite a bit, but that is purely due to the guns not being upgraded. The moment you get the guns upgraded, the well, the spraying is completely gone. The spraying can actually help you though if you're engaging an enemy aircraft, because obviously they'll be dodging, they'll be trying to get out your way, and you never know, a straight 20 well, round might just hit them hard enough to take their wing off or take a control surface out of commission. So, don't ever... Don't ever under underestimate and don't just go for the guns, like, these guns are pretty okay, I mean, sure, you're gonna miss a lot of your shots, but at the same time, those missing of shots may just save your life, and with four cannons, you've got an amazing way to shot. But obviously at this point, we're only about five and a half minutes in, and I'm just gonna be ground panning for the most part, but if you just keep an eye on the enemy team, they're not actually doing particularly great, and I have no idea what happened there. The rocket went straight through the top of the pillbox, and, well, yeah, didn't get any damage on that. At this point, I believe I'm, either my guns are out, or I'm very low on gun ammunition. And at this point, I go for a dive bomb with the 500 pounders, and I don't know what happened there. That was a replay bug, and there you go. What more can I say? This this thing really can clean up when it's left on its own. But anyway, now that this is whole, or well, this whole first section is all done, I will now cut us ahead towards the next part of the battle. But as you can tell, level of light speed for a, a ground attacker partially clean. I mean, the wings technically aren't clean because well, we still have the pylons. Even. I think I had like two performance mods on this aircraft at the time. It is quite quick on the deck for what it is. You gotta remember, this thing's designed to be strapped up with shit and go and grab hand. And yet, this thing cleans up like a trooper and it's pretty quick. Now, obviously, because I'm stuck at this point, I'm still maintaining about 270 miles an hour. But as you'll notice, the enemy team has completely collapsed. Now, unfortunately, the enemy, I believe it's the 288 who's going to be the scumbag. He's essentially just going to drag the game out for another 13 minutes at this point. The K4 is, well, I think he dies in a couple of minutes. But, as you can tell, this enemy team is not doing particularly great. 
And given the fact that they've only got two bombers left and AK-4, it's not looking good for them. And obviously with us being able to, well, show us it, with us being able to actually ground pound to this extent, because we've still got two AD-4s alive, we really can back up the team and really drain these tickets. Obviously, there is a replay bug. It says that I'm not fully loaded again. I am. The two 500 pounders are back on the plane, and so is the H5 rockets. The rockets are decently effective against those heavy pillboxes, as I call them. But even then, it's still not advised to waste all your rockets on a single heavy pillbox when you can use them on your light pillbox and save your ammo for potential targets of opportunity, such as maybe a K4. That's a minor spoiler. But unfortunately in this match, due to how well the friendly AD4 did, I wasn't able to break my record. My record is about 56 in an IL-2 in terms of ground units. At least I, I, I think I didn't break my record. I, I don't remember this... this um, I don't remember this replay very well, it was quite a few weeks ago. But at least the hitboxes are now working for these bloody h -fars. But as you can tell, the K4 is... Well, he's coming our way, and to put it simply, I'm not hugely concerned for the moment. But the thought of him being there does concern me to some extent. So I've fired two pairs of rockets at that tank destroying that Panzer IV there and the K4 is coming down to attack the French 84 that's my ally and unfortunately whilst he does crit the K4 or oh, sorry the 84 the 84 just jingle bombed him and sent him back to the hangar so there you go it was rather fun to watch but as you can tell like now that the K4 is dead, we're pretty much free to do whatever we like. And obviously I've got Bertie here in case um, any of the enemy bombers come near. I've also got a Spitfire on my team and I've also got an F4U4B. So we're, we're pretty capable. Like we've, we've got a lot going for our ground attackers right now. We're st I've still got rockets at this time and I've still got the bombs. So I'm more than capable of cleaning up. And that is just what I'm going to do for the next 10 minutes because, well, the 177 is going to die, but the 288 is going to runway camp. And, well, if you're left alone, you really can turn your team's tickets around, as you can tell here. Now, obviously, you're not going to get games like this all the time. You're probably going to get swarmed by a couple of German fighters most of the time. That tends to happen. But... If you're left unattended, or if you're in a squad with your mates and you have some fighters keeping you covered, you can really turn the tide of battle. So do do make sure to give this thing a go if you really can. But um, I hope you enjoyed today's video on the 84. Like I say, excellent ground attacker. I would highly recommend this to people if you're going down the French or the American airline. And obviously if you're a tanker and you need some air support, this thing is your best bet. Let's put it that way. I'll certainly be using the French AD4 when I get around to spade in the AMX 1375 thing, the, the auto-loading one. Um, I think it's at 6 now, so it should, it should be pretty decent for helping me out and all that. But I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'll let you all off, and well, I'll see you all on the next one.